Hey everyone, Matt over at SFREP, and I wanted to make a short video to kind of go over the use of the new ANSI measurement standards in Sketchit. And I have a pre-recorded webinar out there, but it's, you don't need to watch a 45 minute video to kind of get the gist of what you need to know about using the new ANSI standards in Sketchit. Now, I'm not gonna go over all that's in the ANSI requirements, but I do wanna kind of show you how you can be compliant with those standards in Sketchit, which is our free sketching product. So what I'm gonna do here is go to tools and I'm gonna select Sketchit from the tool here and we'll move it over here to this monitor. <clears throat> now, a couple of, of, of you have been calling in and asking specific questions about a number of, of, of things and that's what I wanna go over here. Now, the first of these is, is Sketchit compliant when it comes to showing distance measurements of, of exterior walls? And the answer to that is it most certainly is. And as a matter of fact, if you, even if you enter your measurements in feet and inches instead of in tenths of a foot, then it will automatically convert to tenths of a foot for you. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to draw a, a living area here. Um, and this is going to be just the default settings here. The first floor, it's gonna to post to one. We're doing a positive um, <clears throat> calculation of gross living area and we do want our exterior markers on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. I'll move my crosshair here, my cursor into the upper left-hand corner because I prefer to draw sketches in a clockwise fashion. And then basically I'm going to take my hand off of the mouse and I'm gonna use the keyboard from here on out. So I'm gonna drop my pen by hitting enter on the keyboard and that drops the pen. And now I am going to go ahead and uh, go 50 feet to the right. And to do that, I'm gonna type in five zero on my keypad. You can look down in the lower left-hand corner just above where the start menu is and you can see that it says 50. And then I'm gonna hit the right arrow button and we're gonna draw a 50 foot wall. That is gonna be the back wall of the house. Now I'm gonna come down 60 feet, so I'll do six zero down, hit enter to lock it in. <clears throat> and now what I'm gonna do is for this next wall, it's gonna be 55 feet, six inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type that in in feet and inches. So I'm gonna do that by going five five, and then I'm gonna hit the apostrophe, which is the shorthand for feet. And then I'm gonna go six, and then I'm gonna hit the quote sign because that's the shorthand for inches. Then we'll go to the left, hit enter to lock it in. Now notice what it does here. It does convert the feet and inches into feet and tenths of a foot. So it puts this down here as 55.5. Now I'm gonna come up 30 feet, enter to lock it in. And this time I'm gonna come back over um, and I'm gonna do it as 55, or excuse me, as 5.5 feet. So we'll just enter it as 5.5 to the right, hit enter to lock it in. And then we'll complete the uh, first floor here by going 30 feet up. And there we go, there's our sketch. Now I'm gonna center this. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pretend like this is actually the second floor of the house, okay? And this, room right here, this area right here, is uh, going to have a sloped roof. Basically, this is a barn style house. So this wall and this wall are going to have a sloped roof. Now, ANSI standards state that the room has to have at least a seven foot high ceiling to be counted as square footage. So if the room had only a six foot high, only a six and a half foot high, even a six foot 11 inch roof line or, or ceiling, it does not count as gross living area. It does not count as square footage. So what we would need to have for this room to count is that not only does the, the ceiling have to be at least seven feet, it has to be, the at least half of the ceiling has to be at seven feet. So we have part of the ceiling essentially coming down as a wall on each side. And what that means is that when that wall slopes down, we can count that wall even past seven feet, even less than seven feet. When it hits five feet, 
Anything past that we can't count as gross living area. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay, so here we have a sloped wall and here we have a sloped wall. Uh, and the rest is at least seven feet. We'll say it's maybe nine feet. It doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new area because I have to create an area because we're going to be subtracting uh, gross living area here. Okay, so I'm going to create a new area and we're going to pretend this is the second floor, but it's a first floor sketch. So I'm just going to leave it as first floor. But the changes I'm going to make are that I'm going to have a negative calculation now because we're going to be subtracting square footage and I'm going to turn off the exterior dimensions. That's a personal preference of mine. You could leave them on if you want, but it does tend to get a little jumbled and messy if you have the exterior dimensions listed. Uh, and then I'm, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to fill type and this is also a personal preference. I want to denote that this is different and I like doing that with a shaded area. So I'm going to do a fill type as this light gray and then I'm going to hit create. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to put it in the general area of this corner right here. And then I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, which is J. That's going to jump the cursor right to that corner. Now I'm going to drop my pen and I've already measured things out. And the area where the slope of the ceiling goes below five feet high is five feet from the, uh, from the wall, from the uh, exterior wall over here. Um, the, the floor comes right up to it. So what I'm going to do is I've dropped my pin and I'm going to go five feet to the right, enter to lock it in. And now I'm going to go 30 feet down, enter to lock it in. I'm going to go five feet to the left. And then I'm going to go 30 feet up, enter to lock it in. And there's my area. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. We're going to J to jump. Well, actually I have to create my area first. So I'm going to create the area. Once again, we're going to go negative. I'm going to turn off exterior dimensions and I'm going to use this gray shading. So we'll do J to jump to the exactly to the corner, hit enter to lock it down or to put down the pin five feet to the left, enter 30 feet down, enter five to the right, enter and then 30 feet up, enter. Now, obviously I've overlapped some of the lines. That doesn't matter. That's fine. So what I'm showing here is that the ceiling is above seven feet in all of this area here. Then we'll say about right here, it starts to slope down. And when it reaches this point, it is below five feet in height. So this area can't be counted as uh, legit square footage here. Now, what I want to do is I want to label that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to mouse over these and you'll see this one is create text. So I'm going to select that. And then we're just going to say, We're going to say below five feet. Actually, let's just spell it out here. I'm going to click on OK. Now, obviously, that's not going to fit in here. So I'm going to use the R key on my keyboard. R is in Romeo. And we're going to rotate that so that it'll fit. And I'm going to drop it in right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. But this time, we'll rotate it all the way around. And then I'll drop that label about right there. I'm done labeling, so I'm going to click Cancel now. So now I've labeled this what it is. Now you also may want to add some interior walls to show that this is actually a room. Um, so I'm going to come over here to create lines. Create lines is how you would do a, an interior wall. So I'm going to select that. Once again, I'm going to use that JK, that J key. And we don't have to create an area this time because interior walls don't affect the square footage of the, uh, of the house. So I'm going to drop my pen and I'm just going to draw manually using the arrow keys all the way over here hit enter and then enter again picks up my pen and there we go now i've got an interior wall here if i want i can also add an icon so if i create icons i'm going to select a door here and uh, i'm going to bump this up to three feet wide of, as a door hit ok and then i'm going to pop my little door in here and we'll do a second one because it's a large room all right we're done we'll hit cancel and there we go now, the other thing that we get uh, questions on quite a bit is also on stairwells and ANSI standards state that a stairwell can essentially the hole from the, the, the hole that is created uh, and the stairwell itself, they belong to the floor where it is descending from. So in this case, we'll pretend this is the second floor. And so the square footage gets counted. Um, uh, gets subtracted when you put that hole in the, in the floor, because that's where the, the stairwell is, um, that goes to the second floor, okay? But 
What you can do with ANSI measurements is that the stairs and any landings get to be counted as square footage and they can essentially fill that hole. So you can count for the second floor any area that stairs or landings take up until it fills that hole up, up into that point. Then anything that's else that's left over that will go to the first floor. Okay. So because the stairwell now is not going to affect the square footage of either the first or the second floor, because we remember we can basically fill that hole in with all of the area of the stairs. Well, what we can do now is we can just use uh, icons here. So create icons. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to select stairs. Now this is going to be a little bit weird because it's kind of backwards. Um, width is actually going to be length and length is actually going to be width. Okay. So the length is going to be six feet and then the width would be 3.5 feet wide. So let's actually make this four feet and we're going to make this seven feet. I'm going to hit okay. And there is my stairwell. Now the stairwell is actually oriented differently. So I'm going to use my R key to rotate it. And we're going to put the stairwell right here. And there we go. There's our stairs. So hopefully that kind of clears things up. If you have any questions, you can contact our tech support at 800-644-4051. Or feel free to email me training at sfrep.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you, but always remember, contact our tech support if you are in desperate need of immediate assistance. But uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. So training at sfrep.com or tech support at 800-644-4051. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day.